Hi everyone! Today I have a Tamiya GF01 drift car. Um, this is not your typical drift car platform at all, as you would imagine. Um, just to kind of give you an idea what your typical GF01 or WROT would look like, there's a standard box art style Jimny. You can see it's very, very different. But I've always had this kind of idea of kind of goofy drift cars and I don't really do things professionally. I want to be a little bit more unique and just have a little more fun with things. So I thought this would be a really fun idea, but someone had already beat me to it, at least starting it, um, in Japan. Because I found this one on eBay and um, I have been working on it. It's not quite finished yet. Um, I will do a full overview video of this once I'm completely finished with the build. Uh, but for now, what I wanted to talk about was this. So today I'm going to be talking about the Tamiya 53200 four-wheel drive one-way diff unit. And this is going to be very, very critical for my little GF01 drift build. I um, mean, if you don't know what a one-way diff is, essentially it's um, a way of building your divs with different uh, one-way shafts and one-way bearings and stuff so that, as the name implies, the diff only spins under power in one direction. So essentially, depending on how you build it, um, for example, you'll get four-wheel drive under power, but when you slam on the brakes, typically with an RC car, four-wheel drive RC car, you'll slam on all four brakes, but if you have this in the front diff, for example, and you slam on the brakes, you'll only get rear brakes. And that's very, very important for a four-wheel drive drift car like this because the main issue um, with four-wheel drive RC drift cars is because you're not able to get that handbrake motion, you're not able to control your drift as well, you're not able to control your angles as well, so that makes them very, very hard to control um, in very technical situations, which is why a lot of these four-wheel drive drift cars have gotten pretty obsolete at this point. Uh, when I started the hobby, drift cars were for the most part, especially anything affordable, was just a four-wheel drive touring car chassis with hard drift tires and maybe a locked rear diff. Um, but nowadays, um, now that uh, RC drifting has gotten a lot more popular, cost of electronics and technology has gone down, um, most people with RC drift cars you'll see running two-wheel drive drift cars with gyro units. Um, and the main reason for that is one, uh, vehicle dynamics are changed a little bit. You can get a lot more steering angles since there's no drive shafts to support in the front wheels, so that's more, more realistic as well. But the main thing is you're able to get a handbrake motion because when you stop, since only your rear wheels are powered, you only stop with your rear wheels as well, giving you that handbrake motion. Um, so this little unit will allow us to do that with our little four-wheel drive GF01. But I have tried four-wheel drive drift cars before and I wasn't really very successful with them in the past. I know I built like an MF01X drift car in the past. I had limited success with that one and the main issue there as well was no real handbrake action. But I learned about one-way diffs when I started getting into Mini Zs. So if you get a Kyosho Mini Z four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, they will all come with drift tires because they are intentioned to be drift cars. But like your older style four-wheel drive drift cars, they have a similar issue where it's very hard to control since there's no handbrake action. But Kyosho offers a one-way diff for these as well to allow you to get that handbrake action. And I'll show you that in action. Um, maybe the black wheel wasn't the best choice, but you can see it's clearly all-wheel drive. But when I slam on the brakes, The front wheels stop a lot later compared to the rear wheels and that is because under braking there's no longer any sort of connection to the drivetrain happening in the front wheels uh, which allows it to kind of freewheel. You can see I'm spinning even by hand the front wheels forward and the rear wheels are not spinning at all. And that allows you to get uh, get that nice little handbrake action and a little bit more controllable of drifts. Um, and I'll kind of show you that in action here real quick with a little clip of this little Mini Z driving.
So what this diff unit uh, was made for was this style of diff. So if you look in the GF01 manual, you'll see this differential unit. And if you have built Tamiya kits a lot, this will be very familiar to you. Tamiya uses this exact diff unit in a lot of their cars. WRO2 uses it, GF01 uses it, MF01X uses it. Um, I believe TL01 also used it. Bunch of cars use this differential unit. Um, those pop metal little and the differential gears are very uh, familiar to a lot of people. And this symmetrical diff design is also very familiar to people. So because they use a lot of part spin and they use this diff on a lot of cars, they're able to offer a single one-way diff hop-up that will fit a multitude of cars. Um, the only problem with that is with Tamiya, a lot of their universal upgrades are not as well known because typically on the box, side of the box and stuff, they're going to want to advertise um, platform specific upgrades so they can sell those upgrades. So these kind of end up getting um, swept under the rug. But doing some research, I did manage to come across this and I think it's a very, very interesting little unit um, for a lot of a lot of um, Tamiya's. You can see also in the back, um, you can also use them on the um, like TA03 chassis and more TT01 style looking diffs it looks like. So very very nice. But before we throw this on the car, let's see how the little Jimny drifts straight out of the box as I got it from Japan. So we're gonna try drifting first without the one-way diff. So it's able to do a slide in one direction, okay, but if I want to switch directions with any sort of precision, or if I want to control the drift within the uh, within the same radius, I'm not able to like fine tune and adjust that because, as you can see, whenever I apply the brakes, it grabs all four wheels, so it's not really doing the handbrake motion that you really really want. So you're kind of just sliding over and not actually handbraking. You're gonna you're kinda having to only use the oversteer caused by when the wheels are spinning in order to get it to, to any sort of angle. So the one-way diff is installed, um, and I'll show you guys it working here real quick. It was a little bit annoying to install into this particular car because of course the GF01, the, the chassis is the transmission, so you do have to take apart everything, but here we go. So you can see. Four-wheel drive, still. So when I brake, only the front wheel spins. See that up close. Four-wheel drive. Brake. And if I reverse,
you can see the front isn't really getting out that much power. So let's see how that changed the performance outside. So it's rained a little bit, but I doubt that's going to really change much. Um, let's see how it does. And you can see the biggest thing you'll notice is it's able to kind of handbrake now. Whereas it wasn't able to do that before. So now we're able to kind of initiate drifts a little easier without a lot of momentum, which is nice. I'm able to do a little like smaller radius drifts a little easier because I am able to control it a little bit more with that one way dip. So you can see, I'm able to make those direction changes a lot easier, thanks to the one-way dip. Whereas before, I would have needed momentum to change directions like that.
So as you saw, it drives way, way better with that one-way diff installed. Um, it's a lot more controllable. It drives a lot more like an actual drift car, which is very fun. Um, and I'm very hopeful for the future of this build. Um, this battery that I ran it with literally ran me for like two and a half hours. And with all the handbrake turns and figure eights and drifting I did, um, the rear, rear tires do have a few little flat spots on it now, which is a little bit funny. But these drift tires are fairly cheap. Um, so not too concerned about that. I do have more parts and stuff coming for this, both for the body and the chassis. So once that build is complete, I will of course do a video on the completed build. But I also did order a few more of those 53200 um, one-way diffs and I have some ideas with it. Um, one I'm definitely going to keep for an extra, like a spare, in case it goes wrong. The, the build of them and the construction of them seem really durable and um, nice enough. I don't really expect them to fail, but just in case I wanted to have one around because they are a little bit harder to find. But with the other one, here is my MF01X Beetle. So if you haven't been around my channel a while, you would know that my original MF01X I ended up converting into a, a drift car, a Mazda Miata drift car. Um, and I wasn't super successful with that build and I ended up moving on to other things. So kind of a failed little project there, but with that one-way diff and my improved driving, um, skills. I'm a lot more hopeful for a drift build, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. But I don't think a Beetle drift car would really fit the theme really well. It, since I'm running a Jimny drift car with the GFO one, I thought it was, was only fitting to go back to the MF01X's roots and go with a Jimny. So I'm going to have a, another Jimny drift car, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Um, that one-way diff is going to make it a lot more fun to drive. And I'm actually really interested to see how this chassis is going to handle as a drift car, especially since on this car, the motor is mounted to the rear, which is very similar to your like two-wheel drive drift car setups. Um, so very interested with that. There's also a little bit more adjustment with this chassis compared to the GF01. So that's going to be interesting, I think, and very, very excited for that build. But for some other ideas, what, what you can do with the 53200 is um, you can use it as intended, like a drift car um, or just like a handbrake thing. Um, but you can also uh, because the diffs in these cars are symmetrical, left to right, you can actually install it the other way around and it'll actually give you uh, two-wheel drive under throttle and then four-wheel braking, which is very, very interesting. Um, so you can do that. So let's say I put it the reverse way and kept the Beetle body on it. I can be a little bit more scale accurate, have a two-wheel drive rally car, but then still have four-wheel drive braking, which I think would be really cool. Or you can install it onto a regular GFO one. And the regular GFO ones are notorious for doing front flips and um, stoppies and stuff. And if you're not really a big fan of that, you can install it into one of the regular GFO ones as well. So that way you'll still have your four wheel drive, but you'll have only rear braking, which makes it so you won't do flip uh, front flips as often which if you spend a lot of time on your body, you probably would appreciate that. But um, I really, f a, a lot of people don't really like that Tamiya reuses a lot of parts, but I think it's really cool. It really makes um, messing around with these things feel more like Legos. So absolutely fun. And Tamiya is all about fun. They're, other than their TRF racing stuff, they're almost never serious. So fun is the name of the game with Tamiya and I think this little one-way uh, one diff set really helps kind of um, add to all the fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and as always I hope everyone has a great day and have fun with RC.
Oh, that's not bad, though.